So for entrepreneurs, let's say watching this, where they have a limited decent business, a couple million dollars, they want yeah. to go to that next level. What well, advice would you I mean, I've got a whole talk called the growth mindset, mm. where I talk about how to build a philosophy in your organization mm. to focus on continual revenue growth. Mm. That's day by day, week by week, month by month, mm. right? You gr it's a grind, mm. right? It's very easy to get distracted. I could mm. do this, I could do that, etc. But you need to really focus on every dollar I spend, how do I make more than a dollar back? Mm. Every month, you're going to be growing 8%. Oh. Every month, because you grow every month at eight percent, and you focus on that, <coughs> you get. I mean, per year you're doubling your revenue every year on year. And when you double your revenue year on year, it gets very quick before you, you, know, you get become a very very large business. So, mm. so, um, you know, I've got a whole talk called Growth Mindset. I mm. encourage people to watch it. But um, look, there's a lot of potential out there. There's, there's still a lot of industries that are kind of just waiting for people to come in and start businesses in. Um, mm. You know, there's a lot of industries where software hasn't reached yet. A lot of industries where technology hasn't reached yet. So, right. you know, you and know. then if they could grow. Do you recommend them kind of bootstrap? I remember your story even for freelancer. At first, you were just changing the copy, changing the landing page. Yeah, just that already produces more revenue. Yeah, so you weren't thinking about throwing money at you know the page yeah. at all, right? So I didn't raise any money to run the business of freelancer. I bootstrapped yeah. it. Other than I took two and a half million dollars in to buy a website. Correct. That was doing a million in revenue. And then had a lot of problems with it. it looked terrible. It looked mm. like Craigslist. Mm. Everyone told me all the problems with it. I say, great, tell me more problems. I'll fix them. <laughs> and every time I fix a problem, the revenue goes up. Yeah, so right. I just fix things one after the other after the other. And um, you know, from from um, the day I bought the business, 2008, 2009, 2008, 2009, I raised two and a half million bucks. Right. Didn't raise any other money. Just mm. fix problems. Fix problems. Ask customers what do we need to Feedback. fix next. Mm -hmm. Then took it public in 2013 and it was a 1.1 billion US dollar valuation. Right. No other money raised. Right. So the initial seed investors made about 15,000% return. They're happy. The they make good money. They're happy. Very good money, they're very happy. You, you wanna be careful you're not in a very, very small niche. Because mm. if you're in a niche, you can be a phenomenal, if the global market size is 20 million bucks mm. and you're a great executor, you know, you, your market share won't be more than 20% of that. Correct. So, you know, you're like, riding the, the, the wave too, right? Yeah, you, you, position. You, you'll be hemmed in by two small markets. So you mm. want to make sure you're in a, it's blue ocean. It is. Right, you want to be in a blue ocean market where it, you, you, you don't care about your competitors. That's right. You're all minnows in a massive, <laughs> massive sea. That's right. All you care about is eating the other little fish. That's right, right. that's right. And, and you know, you don't, you don't care about, you know, other you know, sharks really in the, uh, right. in the ocean, just, whatever. Mm, mm. If you're in red ocean, like you're a telephone company, it's terrible. If you oh. get one customer, oh. they've got to lose a customer. That's right, right. right. It's brutal. Right. Yes, yeah, right. I see what I'm So for someone like yourself, who do you look up to as an entrepreneur? Like, is there any role model, like people like, oh, that's a entrepreneur. Like, you, that person inspires you or you you, oh, look, you learn from them. Look, I don't, I don't sit there and kind of read through biographies and mm. kind of, you know, of various people. I mean, some people have always done phenomenal, yeah. ju phenomenal job. I mean, like you know, Bezos, for example, Bezos, Amazon, yeah. phenomenal job, right? right? Like, I think I read, I read the Everything Store once, but yeah, you know, I don't sit there and kind of, you know, read everything that kind of you right. know, whatever he, he writes, etc. Um, yeah, you know, Elon's done a, some great things. Of He's course. also done some fucking crazy things. As yes, well. so like hundred uh, percent. You know, so hundred you know, percent. You know, no one is perfect. You know, no, no everyone, everyone is human. Yeah, so much. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yes. Elon just tweeted, uh, "I'm now dating uh, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife." Uh, funding secured. Yeah. Right. So uh, you know, like, yeah. no one's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no one's perfect. So yeah. you know, um, but you know, look, there's plenty of people out there who've done done great stuff. I just try and what I try and do is I try and learn when I meet someone who's got a great business, I try and ask them, what was the one thing that you really remember that really took the company to the next level? Mm. What was the one thing you did in terms of marketing or the growth, growth or strategy, or whatever, that mm. really was the secret? And I really try and figure that let out. Me, let me ask that, that question in a different way. Uh, how do you gather and learn? How do you gather information? How do you learn? How do you you know, stay on the cutting edge? Like you read magazines, you read blog posts. Uh, what do you do to gather the intelligence? Yeah, I'm always, I'm always reading things. I'm always on my phone reading. Mm. Everything. Um, look, the, the great thing is now all the wealth information is out there. Mm. You know, uh, back you know, 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> yes. you, you could read a textbook, maybe. You know, like you'd read Jeffrey Moore crossing yeah. the chasm, right? Yeah. Like a, the bowling pin strategy, and kind right. of, you, and there's a lot of a lot of the early business texts were in hindsight. Like you look at a read like a Harvard Business Review case study. Mm. They always figure it out, figure out the strategy, but they do it in the Looking back ten years, mm, right? Mm, um, mm. Well, now, you know, there's there's just so much stuff happening in real time, and it's you know that you can you can go online, you can 
you know, read hacker news, or you can read whatever, and you know, all information's out there. Mm, do you learn also a lot from the team? Because I find that I learn a lot from the team tells me kind of what is going on, right? You hire people smarter than you, mm. and you're constantly learning from them, and that's exciting to work. Yes, yes. And people are smarter. And then they all learn from each other too. Yes, right? they love to come to work because everyone's smart. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And enthusiastic. That's awesome.